Guess what we got in the shop? It's another Mitsubishi. Guys, we do Mitsubishis, yes. But please send me supercars. I need Lamborghinis and I want more Ferraris. I'd like to do a McLaren. Just so you know, we don't just do Mitsubishis. I wanna make it clear. So YouTube world, send me supercars. That's what I'd love to start working on, R8s. Um, but nonetheless, we're happy to work with our Mitsubishi customers and we've got a new model that we haven't had in the shop. We've got a VR4 here. This particular VR4 is looking to have a JDM front bumper put on it. And he's waiting on a couple of brackets, but we are being tasked with building a custom intercooler setup for it, which we've sourced the core for vibrant performance in order to accomplish this. He's got an Evo 8 intercooler core that's on the car currently. And unfortunately it hangs just a little bit too low. And we've taken some measurements, kind of mocked up, so to speak, what we were gonna want here. And this is what we came up with. It's a slightly wider, slightly shorter in terms of height, intercooler core. That'll allow us to get the newer bumper on and not have it hanging too low. So this is actually the first time I've made my own core, believe it or not. Every time I'm doing something intercooler related, I'm usually just making the piping. In this particular case, after discussing it with the customer, we decided let's go ahead and just build a core. So I'm excited to do this. I've got some eighth inch material here. I believe this is 5052, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it should say right here, if I'm not mistaken. It does not, but I know it's 5052, which is good pliable material. And then we're gonna be welding it up to this core. So my intent is to use some of the cardboard out of this box in order to kind of mock up the design for the end tanks, which is really what is new to me. And then once we design the end tanks, we'll go ahead and bend it out of the aluminum. And then accordingly put on some tubing and then it's pretty much like intercooler piping from there. So we'll go ahead and get started. started one side it looks kind of weird whenever you're starting to tack up on these things for some reason but I can assure you that you won't even know once I weld it up that that's there but as you can see actually I should do this. as you can see I've designed a tank that's a little bit more round shaped than what you are most typically expect you know what you typically see out there is more of a boxy style and since both of the intercooler pipes are going to be coming out the rear of the end tanks, I wanted to make sure that it had a nice curvature 
that will direct the air and give it the best flow. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm mocking up the end tank, I'm tacking it and shaping it around, and then I'll actually cut off the end tank after it's tacked up. The plan is to weld the inside of it and then do the outside of it and on the on the uh, end of the intercooler core. So first time doing one of these, like I said, done plenty of intercooler piping and plenty of aluminum work. Intake manifolds and cast whatever turbos, all that kind of stuff. But I've never done an intercooler core. There we go. Here's our first end tank. We've got a nice curvature shape to it and getting ready to weld it up. idea to set up your welder and do a test piece before you weld on anything that's going to be final products because you don't want it to end up like that you want it to look like a beast so practice before you start on product Set. Check this out. We've got our air cooler and tanks fabricated up now. They've been welded both inside and outside. So we will be able to hold plenty of boost. Came out, ooh, I'm dropping them all over the place. It came out really nice. Um, you know, I like to give everything a nice finish. The welds are strong and I'm confident with them. And the shape is very nice and unique in that sense. The next part now is going to be to tack everything up and then should be ready to weld it all up and then figure out mounting. Not too bad. Uh, this is my first time again doing one of these and I actually had a lot of fun. I wouldn't mind doing more of them in the future. So if this is something that you want, hit me up. This is something I can definitely reproduce given the fact that it's off car. And uh, I could probably just make it with some simple enough adjustable bracketry, similar to the way that a lot of the DSM intercooler setups come with. That way it wouldn't be too big of an issue for you guys to kind of mock up and figure out exact fitments with some adjustable bracketry. So this might potentially be something we do more often in the future. I can see that happening now. Doing a mock-up fitment on the car over here with the new intercooler core that we just built we can tell that the core really needs to be recessed as far back as possible in order to get proper fitment so let me see if I can show you guys what I'm talking about when I put this in here and if I try and put the bumper on we're trying to minimize any trimming that we're gonna have to do ultimately 
But if you look down in here, you'll see that there's a lot of things in the way for me to get that core really recessed back in there. We've got the OEM power steering cooler line. We've also got an aftermarket oil cooler here. And we've got a center radiator support. So I've spoken with a customer just now on the phone to let him know that based on mock-up and what I'm seeing, it would be great if he would allow me the flexibility of moving and potentially just eliminating the power steering cooler line and moving the aftermarket oil cooler so that we can really recess that cooler, intercooler core right back in there as far as possible and ultimately save as much of this JDM bumper as we can. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with working on trying to pull this all apart in the front, see how much space we can create for them. And then we'll move forward with finishing up the core and mounting it on the car and then fitting the bumper. But with the bumper being the priority, we want to keep as much of that intact and not trim it up and butcher it. So as much as we can, we want to recess this core so that we don't have to cut up that bumper. And whatever cutting we'll do, of course, we'll make it extremely clean and it will not be butchered, like I said, but we want to try and avoid cutting as much as we can because it's from what I understand, expensive as well as rare and looks are more of a focus at this point for this particular customer, which is totally fine with us. Not everything has to be high horsepower, just has to be clean and look as good as it performs and it keeps us happy. update for you guys currently I have done a couple of things since the last clip that you've seen what I've done is adjusted this intercooler and lowered it a little bit through the bracketry because I sent some mock-up pictures to the customer and based on the JDM bumper that he has and wants us to be installing he wanted to make sure that we had air flowing through to the intercooler on these lower fins. It's really more of a cosmetic request that he had, but making some adjustments on that. I also went ahead and relocated his oil cooler. Um, before it was kind of in a vertical position and wasn't really complementary to the space that we needed in order to accommodate the intercooler along with the original OEM power steering cooler, which is virtually just a, a line, a hard line that runs in the path of the Airstream in the front of the car. We deleted that and just simply relocated, rerouted, I should say, the lines so that instead of going to the front of the car, they just simply reroute that line right there on the left, right here. Right now, Peter's actually out today, but this line on the left here just circles back to the other connection right back there and pretty simple straightforward just had to replenish some fluids it does get a little messy but it's a straightforward process so additionally um, yeah so at this point in time what we're going to do is start working on a bumper support beam that's going to move across from this frame rail in front of the upper side of the intercooler which does have some room with the bumper mocked up and then bolt to this side 
which will not only give it a little bit more rigidity for the chassis, but more importantly, give the bumper the support that it needs not to sag when it's installed. Because although it sits nicely on top of the intercooler here, it does tend to sag in these, these corners. And I know that's an issue if you don't have all the hardware. We're gonna have to build some custom stuff in order to make this fit properly. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. out about two and a quarter so if I put the bumper up here there's a mock-up reference just in the center here to see how far out the bumper sticks out you know okay so if I want to just make sure I'm not too far out right so it's about three inches that's good tabs that'll help hold the bumper up so once we mount this bar up in here we know where we're going to be building little tabs and brackets to hold everything nicely together so. yeah
quick update for you guys. At this point, you can see I've done the intercooler. We relocated the oil cooler to a center point. Additionally, I've also made this bumper support bar, which supports the JDM front bumper and allows for easy and simple installation. You can see that it bolts to that factory frame rail connection on both sides here. And the unique thing about it is that you can fit a fog light in there, the JDM fog light, without running into any sort of clearance issues. It's extremely tight like everything that I do, but it fits nicely. And even more nice is the fact that you don't have to trim the front bumper for the intercooler. It's really clean fitment. The one thing he just had me do because the customer is really particular about rigidity on the bumper. And this thing is really solid now, but he wanted a little bit more rigidity. So what I ended up doing was building these little support brackets that are bolted right here. And to that lower air dam bolt to help give it a little bit more rigidity as well. But overall, it bolts right up pretty much to all the factory connections that are available given that this is a USDM model car and it's a JDM front bumper. And I'll go ahead and lower the car right now. I showed him where we're at as far as the bill goes. He's really happy overall and decided that there's some more stuff he wants me to do while the car's still on the rack. So I said, no problem. So let me go ahead and put it down and I'll talk to you about what he wants me to do next. All right, so now that we're under the hood, what he ended up telling me he wants to do since apparently he's got perhaps a little bit more budget left over than he was anticipating he was going to need for the bumper side of things is he really doesn't like the way that the intercooler piping is for one it doesn't sit straight it's got a little bit of a kind of a, a resting position if you will which is not ideal given the fact that his shift cables are right there but He'd like me to clean this all up for him. He's happy with the blow-off valve and where everything sits other than that. But I told him, you know, you really don't even need this coupler in the middle here. With a coupler on this end, on the throttle body, and a coupler down here, you should be able to get away with installing it without having this middle coupler. So I told him what I can do, if you'd like, is go ahead and just eliminate that. Just weld in a piece of aluminum there, polish everything up so it looks nice. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then the other thing that's bothering him is the fact that his heat uh, shield that's on his manifold here is rubbing on the turbo outlet. So he's going to have me modify that and we talked about also trying to eliminate this coupler as well, potentially adjusting the shape of this and also putting a transition that goes from two and a quarter or whatever this is it looks like two inch up to two and a half inch and only having one coupler and wherever that transition is and will be determined here shortly but that's what he and i discussed and that's what i'm getting ready to work on next